Hi, my name is Ewan Stevenson. I'm a composer uh, and I've had the pleasure of writing the music for the RSNO's uh, production of Yo-Yo and the Little Auk. Yo-Yo and the Little Auk was uh, commissioned in conjunction with Visible Fictions. The story is written by the author Stuart Ennis, directed by Doogie Irvin. Uh, and my job was to create the music uh, to go alongside the story and a beautiful animation by Gavin C. Robinson. I'm here today in the RSNO building and I'd like to take, a, take you through a, a deep dive into the main musical theme, the opening flying theme of Yo-Yo and the Little Orc. So the story of Yo-Yo and the Little Orc it opens with a flock of migratory birds, these little auks, making this very dangerous uh, journey from their summer home in the Arctic to their winter home in the North Atlantic. So my job as the composer was to set the scene and to portray them as, as flying across these rough open seas. And in the flock is the little auk, the main character here, who is making this journey for the very first time. And we learn that he's really excited, but he's also, you know, a bit nervous. Understandably, it's a dangerous journey that he's embarking on. You know, the most famous example of uh, narration with classical music is Prokofiev's Peter and the Wolf. And I think the main theme from Peter and the Wolf, which is Peter's theme, maybe stuck in my head. It's the one that goes like this. I'll play it on the piano. If we break it down, we have a, a major triad. And then it goes into something more linear. And it really emphasizes this note here, which is the, the major seventh of the chord. And if you put that into a chord, C major seventh, you get this lovely bright open sound and very innocent sounding in a way. So when I was creating my theme for The Little Auk, I think I had that major seventh sound in mind. Uh, my theme goes like this. So a different key, the key of A major, but again that bright major seventh sound. So that was the sound that I wanted to create, this sort of innocent uh, sound of this young orc, this little bird. So a major triad we often perceive as being quite bright and happy, so... But if we make that a minor triad, it suddenly takes on something a bit darker and foreboding. So with uh, the little orc theme, it starts bright, but then immediately goes to a minor chord, so this conveys the little locks' uh, trepidation. Okay, then back to the major. Uh, and that's how I tried to create this balance between him, you know, his excitement, but also trepidation for this journey. So here's the melody again on the piano, and then I'm going to play you how it sounds with the full orchestra. So in addition to the melody, um, you want to also create an accompaniment part. So I use this as an opportunity to create the sound of the, the aux beating wings. So I compose this on the piano and I use my left hand for this. So uh, this is how it sounded. Mm -hmm. So that's going on underneath the melody. So this time if you listen to the theme again, you can hear that in the lower strings and also highlighted by uh, the clarinet and the bassoon.
So at this point I've got the first eight bars of the theme and now uh, a composer's job is to develop that theme. So I, I took a little motif from the theme which was this at the top of the phrase. This part here. And I thought well I can use that to create uh, a kind of bird call. So the next part of the, the melody goes like this. And when you hear that uh, in the orchestral version, I've tried to create almost like a dialogue between the, the, the little auk and the rest of the flock. So you might have heard there the fragment of the theme there. And I divided that up between the strings and the woodwind. So it's a, a device called call and response. So the strings call out, and then you hear the woodwind answering. And it's almost like they're having a, a conversation. Maybe they're saying, you okay? And then the woodwind respond, yeah, I'm fine. And then something else. So it's a very common musical device. It's called call and response. So, so far we've heard from uh, two of the main families in the orchestra, the strings, which are instruments like the violin and the cello, and also the woodwinds, like the flutes, the clarinets and oboes. We're about to hear now from another family in the orchestra and that's the brass. Um, and they are, I've held them back to this point because they're a, a much heavier, louder sound or they have the capability of doing that. So it's all been quite light so far. At this moment in the picture, the birds are going to swoop down and you see a huge wave crashing up. So the brass are great at this point to create this swell of the ocean which you'll hear now. So there uh, also you may have heard another instrumental family and that's the percussion family. And to uh, augment the sound of that swell of the ocean, I used uh, a timpani drum, uh, the roll of a timpani drum, and also um, a cymbal. So you get this timpani roll with, with cymbal and the brass coming in to create this ocean swell. So the little ox are on this journey and one of the great things about music is that uh, through the process of changing key, we can actually create uh, this sense of, of journeying from point A to point B. So in the flying theme, it begins in the key of A major. But after a minute or so, we end up in the key of C major, which is over here. So we've moved from point A to point B. And it happens quite subtly here, so I'm in A major. And then the A major chord uh, goes to minor. And then we use a, a, a modulation passage, which is where you um, change chords in a way that allows you to get from one key to the next. So um, we are here to the minor now. So minor there, so we were in A major. And then you hear this chord. And suddenly we're in C major. So at this point in the story, um, suddenly a storm appears. And to create the, the sound of a storm, uh, we were in C major. And I very simply just changed to C minor to create this darker sound. And the melody, again like the opening theme, is based on a, a simple arpeggio. And at the top of that minor sound, it suddenly lurches into this unexpected chord, uh, which is called an augmented chord. Okay. That's a kind of classic uh, horror movie device, that chord. Um, the most famous example is, well, in my mind, is the Hitchcock uh, vertigo theme, uh, which has got this use of the augmented sound. So this unexpected moment, the so storm has suddenly arrived. So we go. And you 
can hear that uh, with the orchestra now. So you can hear the, the brass there, the big loud brass, uh, adding the impact of the, the, the big crashing storm. So the melody repeats, but now it's up a tone. So we've gone... And now we're up to this one. So you can hear that in the music now. And again, you hear the roll of the timps and the, the symbol, which uh, you can see in the picture with the flash of lightning. It's like a, a thunderstorm. Now, at this point, the little auk gets blown off course. It gets separated from its flock and, and being blown off. So to create that idea of him being helpless uh, to the elements, I decided to, again, use this uh, modulation uh, device, but this time to, to go through a series of different keys very quickly. So we're in uh, D minor, and then it suddenly goes here. So suddenly we're lurching away very quickly uh, to unexpected key centres, which helps create this uh, idea of the, the little lock being blown off course. So as the storm subsides, uh, I needed to find a way to, to bring this section to close. And the little auk, he's been blown off course, he's completely helpless. So I decided to use this uh, chord, which uh, sounds unresolved. We, we don't know what's happening. So it's a G seventh chord, but it's got some additional chromatic notes in it. To create that sense of uh, disillusion and helplessness. And you can hear it in the upper woodwind, uh, that, this little motif, which again is the use of that augmented chord, but this time in linear form, and it's almost meant to sound like uh, the little or crying out for help. And it gets quieter and quieter as uh, the woodwind become less, and it eventually gets down to solo flute, and then he lands with a plop in the heather uh, in Inverkithkin, uh, and you can hear that with the, the pizzicato strings. So the little auk, he's been separated from his flock, uh, blown off course, and he lands with a plop in a clump of purple heather. He's landed in this uh, island of Scotland, in this town called Inverkithkin. And to create the, the sound of the little lock virtually dropping out of the air and landing with a plop, I used uh, a technique that the string players can use called pizzicato. So normally we have uh, string players using their bow to create a nice long sustained sound, but they can also pluck the strings with their fingers, and that's the, the term pizzicato, and you can hear that at the very end of this section. So here's how it might sound on the piano. Thank you. <laughs> 